Bem amigos do blog dos esportes americanos, este é o nosso sétimo podcast, vale para a etapa do Texas da NASCAR. No final de semana tivemos a etapa de Martinsville, vitória do Jimmy Johnson. O Danny Hamlin liderou boa parte da prova, porém a 15 voltas do fim o Johnson se aproximou e deu aquele leve totó suficiente para desestabilizar o Hamlin e vencer a prova. A Stuart Haas fez uma excelente prova, colocou o Tony Stewart em terceiro e o Ryan Newman em sexto. A Hendrick também fez, fez seus quatro carros no top 10, incluindo a vitória do Johnson, o quarto lugar do Jeff Gordon, que havia largado da pole devido à chuva, o um sexto do Mark Martin e o Dale Jr. conseguiu um bom resultado, é, seu melhor na temporada, um oitavo lugar. O Ambrose e o Montoya, que tinham se destacado em Bristol, fizeram boa prova também. O Montoya foi 12º e o Ambrose em 14 Para a prova do Texas, nós temos um oval muito semelhante à Atlanta, porém a média é um pouco mais rápida. É um circuito perigoso, digamos. Tivemos várias corridas da Indy com acidente forte lá. Quem não se lembra do acidente do Kenny Breck? E o Michael McDowell testou o Safer Barry ano passado nos treinos. Bateu muito forte, chocou-se de frente com o muro. Vocês vão conferir um vídeo do acidente. Na prova tinha as vitórias do Carl Edwards. É, a Roche teve um, um início de temporada diferente este ano. Né? O Edwards já partiu para sua terceira vitória. Esse ano ele ainda não andou bem. Não mostrou o que veio na temporada. E era uma das grandes apostas. É, vamos esperar para ver o que dá no, no Texas. Pelo domínio do Kurt Busch em Atlanta, eu apostaria num Dodge. Provavelmente o Busch deve andar bem novamente. É, vocês vão conferir as votos finais do ano passado. Vitória Take a hit like this. Let's take a look. I think you're going to see him get loose the minute oh, he yeah. turns down into the corner. Yeah, and he's just, man. And that thing just absolutely. I will guarantee you that impact was well over 180, probably 185 miles per hour. We've already seen 199 or better getting in there going straight. That's a part of the racetrack. Oh, oh I, I, I can't even hardly watch that. It's a part of the racetrack, but Murray said was a little slick getting in. Goodness. Not knowing if Michael changed his line a little bit, got a little too much into that speedy dry. Oh, my Lord. But that he walked away and waved to the crowd while walking to the ambulance after that impact is a great testament to safety of these cars and these racetracks today. If there's been any fans, if there's been industry that has questioned the car tomorrow ladies and gentlemen take a look at this guy that walked out of that race car just a few minutes ago where the driver is and you know michael mcdowell a lot like his car owner michael waltrip is a big boy he's very tall that car tomorrow is about two and a half inches taller in the greenhouse area than our old car and about four inches wider and all those are great things An incredibly hard crash for rookie Michael McDowell, but the best part, he walks away with a wave. The one of those was Martin Truex, whose car is now blown up, parked on pit road, and I believe done for the day. So that'll leave us 10 lead lap cars. The 07, the 12, the 20, and the 8, two fresh right side tires, Jeff Burton in the 31 and 10th, four fresh tires. I'm just really worried about that 48 being down there on the apron so much. He has got to be really wondering if he's going to have enough fuel. And that's the reason he's down there. Yeah. Well, here we go, boys. He wants to get a shot here. Tighten your belts. One more time. Don't spin the tires. Yikes. Carl left the outside open. I'll have to say that. Here comes Clint Boyer with those two fresh tires. He's going for third, going down into turn one, side by side. Almost four wide, back where Newman and Kenseth battle. Well, Kenseth is in trouble. We see that. Here comes. Here comes Smoke. Here comes Clint Boyer again with those two fresh tires going up into three. We'll be coming to the white flag. He's side by side with Kyle Busch. I don't th oh, that's three wide again. That's Will exciting. They make it? That's exciting for third, but ain't much happening White up here. Flag, in the front. Time, back. Carl Edwards running away. The battle is back at sixth place. Yeah, those guys that got tires are fighting with each other big time. Yes, they are. Newman, Kenseth, Tony Stewart, oh, Jeff Burton on the outside, and look Denny out. Hamlin. Look that's out. a hornet's nest. Coming to the checkered flag. Matt Kenseth's a big old sandwich. Carl Edwards off turn four. 
will win the Samsung 5. Oh, we got Clint Boyer sideways. Denny Hamlin and Boyer got together with Boyer ending up in the wall, but Great coming job, across the line in fourth. Yeah, Hamlin got into Boyer, and uh, I don't know how Clint kept from wrecking that thing. Uh, he did hit the wall, but he didn't wreck anybody else. Yeah, that's unofficial. I think he actually came across Mike Clint Boyer. Yeah. The last will go to victory lane at his house. But first, for the second time at Texas Motor Speedway, you saw earlier the one that he did in the evening of 2005. Carl Edwards will get to do his signature move, the backflip off the door of that car. But he's gotten a lot smarter, or else somebody wised him up, because he's always over next to the grass. <laughs> he quit doing it up on the racetrack. I'm oh. sure a, I'm sure Jack said, you know, you might want to try that out in the grass. Ah, yeah, stuck the landing. Nothing, nothing to it. All day, the man to beat. Carl Edwards dominates in Texas.